right now we have 20 mega cities all around the world like a lot of a lot of cities around the world not to mention that cities also experience the worst number in terms of covid cases so before talking a little bit further about the cities i will um, introduce myself so i'm an indonesian and there is a quote in indonesia saying tak kenal maka tak sayang it means if you don't know someone you will not like the person and i don't necessarily uh, ask you to like me in person but at least you, you i expect you to get something from our sessions like it and probably get something to practice in your daily life so i'm a united nations representative for un across of new york or united nations economic and social council for new york headquarters for business innovation research and development that's an NGO with special consultative status to you and ECOSOC. And I'm also a chosen international young urban leader by United Nations SDS and, and also their local pathway fellows and also a mentor for their local pathway fellowships program for this year. So, and yeah, I will bring you a little bit to Bali. Have you ever heard about Bali? It's like a oh, beautiful beaches and so on. So I lived there for quite a while. Uh, I was working with Sandur, in the Sandur. So it's there is an area in Bali named Sandur. It's um, an area which we can plant like we do mangrove uh, forestry planting. We we built a separate bike lane along the city and so on. That's what I I and my team do with the Sandur Municipal Government and. Yeah, that's what city planning do. So city planning is not merely about government, politics, and all the boring stuff that we heard in the newspaper. But uh, yeah, city planning can be fun too. We save turtle, we clean beach, we do all of those stuff to save the world, to save the beaches, to save the cities, and so on. And what I'm doing right now here in Sydney, I also work for Inner West Councils. That's what it's called. So we have, uh, so it's what I'm, where I'm doing right now is it's called Inner West Council. So it's uh, derived from three different councils that we want to amalgamate into one. So right now I'm working with my team to amalgamate all of their planning controls and uh, and city planning policies. That's a little bit about me. And right now let's go to what is past COVID cities. I really love these illustrations that I saw from the Twitter last year when we were or we are in the self-isolation. It is huge how in the midst of frustrations, we have hope that after COVID, we are not only back to normal or we call it business as usual, but also how to move forward. The United Nations call it TDP or building back better. Let Let's have a look a little bit deeper. We forget that despite of COVID chaos that's happened in the world, COVID is actually giving us some advantage of how we actually gather more with our families. Uh, we have less industrial activity, less air pollution. And we also have uh, uh, air pollution that caused by flight is actually reduced because it's all coming to online meeting, just like us right now. So it means that there are some stuff that's actually good as well, instead of the chaos that's happening around the world. That's how we imagine our world is never back to normal, because some people say it will never back to normal at all, but move forward to become better, just like in this picture. We use more renewable energy, and we have more time with our beloved one, and so on. This picture, perfect picture in what city planners and mayors and in the country leaders talk back then in the UNGA special sessions or United Nations General Assembly special sessions in 2020 for building that better. COVID has brings uh, our sustainable development goals, if you, if you know, uh, experience drawback as mentioned by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He's also said that Although the novel coronavirus affects every person and community, it does not do so equally. Instead, it has exposed and exacerbated uh, existing inequalities and injustice. 
we see that inequalities is actually get stronger and we can see it more obvious than ever. Just because everyone is now locked up inside, our world cannot automatically recover. And according to UN Global Summit 2020, we need like 257 more years to achieve gender equality and 70 million children is uh, get out of the city and displaced and so on. And all of that, uh, that stuff that is not pleasing to hear in our ears. And this is why we don't want to step there and give up on the pandemic. Okay, pandemic stop our world, so that's all. No, we want to move forward. We want to deliver uh, changes and make the pandemic not only as a challenge, but also as an opportunity to move forward. We want to move forward, we want to build back better. That's how would you and come up with that. The good news is, despite of the mass uh, hopelessness that we experience together, uh, many world, world and city leaders agree upon using COVID not only as a challenge, as I mentioned earlier, but also as an opportunity to build back better. Still in that UNGA specializations for COVID-19 predict back better, some cities across the globe actually has used COVID as an opportunity to develop their cities to become a better place. Because citizens are locked inside, it is the fastest way to make changes without disrupt people, activities, and putting risk on, on people where we're doing infrastructure development. Here are some post-COVID unique interventions that I find around the globe um, on Twitter. The first is that there are more cities across the globe that review their policies uh, to encourage more restaurants to operate our door. The city's government across the globe support this activity with stimulus and policy change. So stimulus is actually one of the government force to create a positive change. It's giving funding to the business owners, something like that. And as you these pictures in the left one, uh, the study bears are helping people to do physical distancing with their cute ways. People are being reminded to do physical distancing without feeling socially distanced from their loved ones, or actually they are accompanied by the bears. The second photo is big group by crew. That's also actually happening in Paris that shows how bicycle and their arts will fill the city and create less polluted city. It is something that we only can dream before COVID, but it's happening during COVID. Cars is not no longer there. It's now it's changed become a bike lane. So all of the, all of the the path, as shown in the pictures at the right, there are more and more cities in the world that change their roadways to become bike lanes, and there are more parks, more public transport, and more sustainable future to give the room to more people to do their activities. So. Why, in order to create a more livable cities, we have to restrict the use of the cars. See these pictures. These are the same amount of people in the different modes of transport. There are, some, there are 50 people in all of this, uh, these pictures, right? Some of them walk, some of them cycle, some of them ride a bus or drive a car. If you ask where do cities get their traffic congestions, you can see here, there is like plenty of people that driving a cars and just fulfill the, the roadways. But imagine if you walk or you, you use public transport, you just consume less, much less spaces than you driving a car. So also driving cars is actually cost community more than other modes of transport. Do you know that transit congestions is actually expensive? And we as taxpayers, actually pay for that. First, as the car stuck on one place for a certain amount of time, actually it's corroded the, the roadways. So we have to redo the roadways every some, the roadways infrastructures every some years. And also the amount of fuel that happens because the long process to bring the fuel to the, to the consumers and also the fossil fuel that bring greenhouse gas emissions and also actions to uh, deal with the greenhouse gas emissions itself. And it means then, and you know, greenhouse gas emission is non-reversible, non-reversible uh, things that that will harm our future, especially we as young people. So no wonder, again, our communities need to pay a lot of money only for people who own cars. But imagine if everyone in the world ride public transport or bicycle or just walk. 
where we can meet our neighbors and have companion and chats in our ways to university or office. Hi, how are you? And it's like how many, how, how long have uh, we do that before COVID? We haven't say hi to our neighbors. We haven't say hi to our people at the street. Like, like we never know everyone. On the other hand, more cities in the globe change their policies to work from home. So do you like to work from home, guys, or you want to go to office? That's the question. And how actually citizens can lead the movement? Let me introduce you so of an inspiring lady named Jane Jacobs. So who is Jane Jacobs? She must be a famous city planner. I also thought that way, but she wasn't. She was only a journalist and a housewife with her bravery had encouraged community in the United States to stand against the city leaders and planners. It was pictured that city planners and government was dominated by big, big gentlemen. The only thing about how to grow economics instead of creating a livable space for the community. They destroy houses to build highways, change low, low rise houses and shops becoming high rise apartments only. Are high rise buildings bad? Hmm. For some people, they think it is actually good, isn't it? Like you have high rises, it's all sort of like uh, like a real city, like in our imaginations. But do you know that high rises buildings are more modern? So it's lack of identity, it's lack of community, uh, community footprints. It prones to be more individualistic. If we live in apartment and if we live in the in the low rise uh, houses, we tend to talk more when we are live in the low rise houses. That's why we don't really, as a planner, we don't really like high rise buildings. And we, lo we lost our sense of home, our belonging to our home, because it is high rise. We just go home and sleep and that's everything. We don't have that sense of belonging to, to a sense of attachment to one place. And during that time, sorry, during that time, uh, New York was dry. It was, uh, there are plenty of urban renewal. Urban renewal is basically changing some areas to become another stuff. For example, slum and low rise houses, they just remove everything massively and just change it to become high rise apartments and office blocks. And New York was designed as a home for infrastructure, not for people. But then Jen Jacobs, the housewife, the journalist, move forward. She invited her family, her fellow citizens to conduct, conduct uh, collective actions against this inhuman environment. New York needs more people, more trees, more park and more greenery, more low rise buildings and friendly for human scale because high rise building is just not friendly for our human scale. We are human, right? And as you can see now, New York becoming more people focused, right? It is one of the cities that never sleep in the world. And as you know, there is one planner named Amanda Burden. It's one of New York planners that's also actually closed some areas in New York and uh, removed cars from there, just forbid car to enter the area. So there's more people can come inside and outside and not being, a, not being afraid of being hit by a car. And this is why all of us can contribute to implement sustainable development goals 11. SDG 11 is not only the responsibility of city leaders, but also all of us as citizens. More and more people, more and more cities in the world, like United Kingdom, like Australia, and so on, has changed the city planning control and, and power to become more citizen focused. For example, in the UK, Actually, citizens, especially in the neighborhood level, they can make their own policy for their neighborhood. But of course, they have to submit to the government for permissions, but they have that power to make their own policies. So this is why change is possible, and it can start for anyone, including housewife like Jane Jacobs, including me, and including you that listening to these workshops. Back to the uh, COVID pandemic, just because the world is now paused, uh, it doesn't mean the problem is ended just that, just, just as I said before. So we need to deal with the city problems. Here 